This video is going to focus on why some people don't use contraception, even when they're not necessarily ready for parenthood. Okay, so my last video was about abortion, and during the discussion in the comment section, some people kept wanting to bring contraception into the issue. Well, contraception is not part of the abortion debate. The abortion debate consists of, are you for it or against it? In order for abortion to be an option, conception would already have had to happen. It's too late for contraception once a baby is conceived. The issue at that point is what's going to happen to the baby. Will it be kept by the parent or parents? Will it be adopted out or aborted? The next point I wanted to make is that even though everybody who is not ready to be a parent should use protection or some kind of contraception, we know that regardless of our best efforts, everybody is not going to do that. Just like no matter how many safety features we put in cars or how much we lower the speed limits or outlaw drinking and driving or talking on the cell phone while driving, we still know that a certain amount of car accidents are going to happen regardless. We know that a certain amount of house fires are going to happen per year. We know that a certain amount of college students are going to flunk out of college. We know that a certain amount of people are going to get killed on the job, etc., etc. We have not evolved to the point where we can get those numbers down to zero. Unplanned slash unwanted pregnancies are nothing new. They've been going on since the beginning of time. And regardless of our best efforts, they will continue to happen. Now that doesn't mean that we should give up and stop trying to educate people about how they can take control of their reproduction. We try, but we still know that some will fail to take precautions. This is not being pessimistic or trying to give somebody a pass. This is reality. And it's because of the reality that not everyone who gets pregnant is ready to be a parent that abortion gets put on the table. And some people are saying, well, these women are just being irresponsible. I agree. What do you want to be mothers for? Irresponsible ain't a good look for a mother. All right, moving along to the main point of this video. I know I said I was going to talk about why people don't use contraception, but I'm also going to talk about why people don't plan their families better. Certain people, that is. I'm going to go off on a little side tangent for a minute. Throughout my years, I've had the privilege of knowing several people who have been quite wealthy. And I say privilege because knowing them gave me the chance to see the difference between how wealthy people handle money and how not wealthy people handle money. This one guy I knew, he was actually a multimillionaire, and he had a huge, beautiful house that was surrounded by lush green shrubbery. And it wasn't just a few bushes, it was a real jungle out there, but it looked nice. Looking at the size of his yard, you would think he would have hired somebody to do his yard work. But he would get right out there with his girlfriend and pull weeds and thorns for hours until the job was done. And they'd come back in the house all dirty with thorn pricks in their hands and scratches and scrapes, but they saved a couple hundred bucks. My next example would be Oprah, who carries her lunch to work. You'd think she'd eat out every day, and if she was concerned about her weight or eating healthfully, she could pay anybody to make whatever she wanted. Healthy, not healthy, made out of gold, whatever. I know people who make far less money than she does, and they eat out every single weekday for lunch. One of the things that financial advisors um, advise you to do if you want to cut expenses is to take your lunch to work. I don't know if Oprah takes her lunch for monetary reasons or for health reasons, but you just think she would eat out. My next example is one of the doctors I dated. He would perform a certain type of elective surgery. It wasn't cosmetic, but it was elective. But anyway, this guy was raking in 45 grand a week. And I didn't make a mistake. I don't mean 4,500 as in 4,500. I mean 45 and then three zeros, as in how much some people make in a year. Anyway, I saw his identity package, and that sounds kind of gross, but it's just not. That's graphic design lingo. An identity package, for those of you who don't know, consists of creating a logo, a business card, letterhead, and an envelope. Sometimes it can include stuff like a mouse pad or some other frilly shit like that, but that's basically the basics. And that was redundant. His identity package wasn't bad, but I could do better. He told me he had shopped around for a designer to make him an identity package, but everybody kept trying to charge him like $100 or $200, and he said I could just do it myself. Again, we're talking about a guy who's pulling in forty-five grand a week. But he had it in his head that what he wanted was not worth $100 or $200 of his money, so he said I'll do it myself. So he bought himself a little cheapo desktop publishing program that you can get at Walmart, and he created his own identity package. And my last example is another guy I dated. He was one of the other engineers. And on our first date, he told me he was in the process of irrigating his own lawn. He was installing some kind of sprinkler system where the sprinklers would come up out of the ground and, and spray and then go back down. And I said, oh, is that what you do for a living? I thought you did some kind of mechanical programming or something. 
And he said, no, I just do it myself because they want to charge me $2,000. And I asked him, is that even legal to go digging up your yard and laying down pipes and stuff? And he said, oh, you just have to get a permit. And I'm like, right. Now, this guy was making good money, but I could see why in this case you'd want to save $2,000. However, when you start digging up yards and messing with pipes, you can really mess some shit up. And if you have to call somebody in to correct your mistake, that's even more money. And if you get fined for something, that's even more money. So certain things, even though they cost a lot of money or money I don't plan on spending necessarily, I leave it to the experts. But he did it himself and he saved $2,000. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is these people have plans or they have a budget and they don't like to deviate away from it. Even if that means putting in hours of work on their part. They'd rather spend time than spend money. And this is a little bit off topic, but a lot of people who are quote unquote new money, They'd rather spend money than the time. But anyway, let's step it down quite a few notches to me and my guy. Members of my family and a few of our friends have been asking us, when y'all gonna have a baby? How come you're not pregnant yet? And we just tell them, well, we're not quite where we want to be when we start having kids. I was talking about this situation with Cap about four or five months ago. When you say that you're waiting until a certain time to have kids to a person who had kids when they were in high school or when they were 21 or 23 when they didn't have anything set up, when you say something like that to them, what they hear is, you fucked up and I'm trying not to do what you did. Now that's not what I said, but that's what they hear. And they get all defensive. But anyway, the place me and my guy were staying in before we got this place, it had two bedrooms. We were using one room for a bedroom and the other room as an office. Now if we'd had a baby when we first got married, it's not like it would have put us in the poorhouse. It would have been well fed and well clothed, but we would have lost our office. The baby would need a room, so we'd have to take everything out of there and put the baby in there. Now, are we going to die without our office? No. But those were the plans we made. We planned to have an office. We want bedrooms for everybody who needs one, but then we want a room left over for an office. But a lot of other people out there, the reason they don't plan their families is kind of because they don't have anything to lose. Or because they don't have a plan that they're trying to adhere to. They don't care if things happen one way or the other, it's just whatever. These people are reactive instead of proactive. Back in my grandparents' day before the birth control pill, a lot of black people would have 8, 10, 11 dozen kids because, I mean, they weren't going to stop having sex, so uh, <laughs> they just kind of had to make do as the kids came. That might mean they have one bedroom with three or four girls in it and then another bedroom with five or six boys in it, and there would be pallets on the floor or four people in one king-sized bed, and my grandmother would make one big pot of beans or whatever she was cooking that day. And she had to ration it out to make sure everybody got some. Now, my mom and my aunts and uncles weren't starving by any means, but they didn't necessarily get all the food that they wanted. Maybe they were a little bit hungry still after dinner. But those are the kinds of adjustments and sacrifices you have to make either when you don't have the means to control how many kids you have or either you just fail to do so. And, of course, money went a lot further back then, but things were still tight. A lot of times when the genders discuss whose responsibility it is to prevent conception, the women will say, oh, the men need to keep it in their pants, and the men will say, oh, the women need to keep their legs closed. I stopped looking at it that way when I realized that both sexes are equally capable of preventing conception. And the people who take care so that they don't make babies before they're ready are the people who have something to lose. If it was a man, they knew that making a baby before the right time might mean being hit up for child support for the next 18 years. Depending on what you make, that can be a couple of hundred dollars going out of your household every month to a few thousand. Or maybe the guy's in school and he knows that if he has a baby right now, not only is that extra expense, there will be extra time taken away from his studies and possibly working because he has to spend time with the baby. Some guys know they don't want kids ever, so they either get snipped or they wrap it up. And then the women who take precautions, some of them are like me. I knew that having a baby before I was married would make it hard for me to get the man that I really want. Also, I know what I went through being a child raised by a single mom, and I don't want to visit that on my children. Some women are too busy right now with their careers. And then still other women, they don't want kids ever, so they either get sniffed or they wrap it up. I don't feel that one sex is less capable than the other of preventing pregnancy. People who have something to lose, take care. I have never, and I mean ever, been with a guy who has nothing to lose. If a guy don't care either way whether he gets you pregnant or not, if he don't ask no questions about if you're on birth control, that's a guy that doesn't have anything to lose. Either that or he doesn't care what he loses. Those guys make the worst fathers, and not even necessarily because they're not going to be there, but because they don't have a plan. So instead of having funds that they can allocate to the baby, 
they have to scrape together whatever they have left after they pay their bills. Or they might not even have enough money for themselves. But they ain't worried about it. They'll just cross the baby bridge when they get to it. If a baby comes, we'll deal with it then. And it's people who have this mentality who have been telling me, Oh, you don't need an office. Go on, have your baby, girl. And I'm like, no, our plans in life include having an office. Oh, it ain't that serious. We keep our computer and stuff in the den. Well, we keep our computer and stuff in the office. And when we have a baby, we're going to keep the baby in the baby room. Because we're going to plan it out. Now, of course, things don't always go according to plan. Sometimes emergencies and surprises do come up. But don't live by that. Don't let that be your motto. Make you a plan and try to stick to it. And the better you plan, the better you'll be able to handle the surprises. Alright, that's all I have to say on the video topic. Now for an update on my new channel. I'm shooting to launch my new channel in April. Right now I have a lot of projects going on. And when I release my first video, I want to be able to keep releasing videos and keep the momentum up. Instead of posting my first video and then not being able to post again for a month or so. I would like to be able to put one up once a week. I'm also working on a website. I already have my domain name. No, I ain't telling you what it is yet. I've already decided the topic of my first video. No, I'm not going to tell you that either. But once I post it, I'll also announce a Twitter and Facebook page. Actually, I might not even have a Twitter page. I still have not figured out what that site is for. It seems to be just a site for you to post the mundane details of your life, like I'm eating breakfast now, or for you to post something offensive that's going to get you fired. But anyway, I'll look into it, and if it makes sense, I'll make a Twitter page. Otherwise, I'll just have a Facebook page. If I get everything together sooner, then I'll launch sooner, but I'm thinking it's going to be April. Alright, that's it. Peace.